Hi everyone, Rabbi David Tower here for Mishnah study, Masechet Shivuot, Perek Bet, Mishnah Dalet. At the end of the previous Mishnah, we talked about a mitzvah ta'aseh sheba mikdash, a positive commandment uh, connected to the mikdash, which Din would not be hayav um, if they made a ta'ut in Hora'ah for someone who violated it. We said that if the Din um, gave someone a heter to take the long exit from within the Beit HaMikdash, if they became Tameh in the Azara, um, because it's only a Korban or Levi Ored, the Din would not be obligated to bring Parheim Davar Shal Sibur. There is also a Lot case in reference of the Mikdash, which is found in Masechet Chorayot, Perik Bet, Mishnah Dalid, which is that the Beddin told somebody they can enter the Mikdash in a state of Tum'ah, again, because that's only Korban or Levi Ored, they would not be liable to bring parhe in davar shel sibur. This is the mitzvah ta'aseh and mitzvah lo ta'aseh connected to the mikdash that bedin do not have to bring parhe in davar shel sibur. If you look at that mishnah in Horayot, perek bet mishnah dalin, we find that there's also a mitzvah ta'aseh and mitzvah lo ta'aseh related to the laws of nida that is the opposite of mikdash that would be hayavin aleha that the bedin would be liable for a parhe in davar shel sibur if they gave an incorrect hora'a. And so piggybacking off of the previous Mishnah, our Mishnah goes off on a slight tangent from the concepts of Yidiyot HaTum'ah and discusses what is the mitzvah ta'aseh, what is the positive commandment related to Nida that the Bedin would be hayav par heinim davar shel sibur in the case of Hora'ah B'ta'ut, which they are not liable for in the mitzvah ta'aseh Sheba Mikdash for Hora'ah B'ta'ut. Let's read the Mishnah and we'll see the commentary of the Rambam. Ne'ezuhi mitzvah ta'aseh Sheba Nida she'chayavin aleha, what is the positive commandment related to the laws of Nida that Bedin would be liable for should they give a heter, a for the person to be able to do? The case is, a person was engaging in intercourse with his spouse and she was tehora, she was pure, she was not Nida. The Amrado, and in the middle of the act of intercourse, she says to him, Nitmeti, I have become Tameh. She menstruates in the middle of the intercourse. Now the man is inside of the woman. What does he do? If he immediately, and perhaps instinctually, pulls out from the act of intercourse, he is liable for having intercourse with a woman who's nida. Why? Because pulling out with an erection is beneficial to the person like penetrating into the woman. So in other words, if a person is in the act of intercourse and the woman um, gets her period while that's going on, he is prohibited from pulling out while he is still erect. For this will give him hana'a, and then he'll get hana, that will be considered hana'a of intercourse with a woman who's nida, who'll be liable for karet. Over here, what we're saying is, is that if the deen should be ta'ut, should mistakenly give a person a heter to pull out in such a case while he's erect, the Bedin would be liable for par he'elim davar shel sibur for giving a hora'ah b'ta'ut. Now, one is wondering, so what should the person do when he finds this out la'alenu in the act of intercourse? What's his act of recourse? The Mishnah does not say. We look to the Rambam and the Rambam tells us what to do. And this is in fact codified by Shulchan Aruch in Yore De'a. Um, he says, Ra'ui amond kemoshihu. At that moment that he finds out that his wife is menstruating while they are having intercourse, he has to stop, pause. He should not go back and forth at all. He digs his nails into the ground. In other words, to fight the intensity of this pleasure to want to pull out. Until his erection subsides. And then, and only then, when he has no longer erect, may he exit. The exiting from the woman with and with uh, without being erect is a mitzvah ase, is a positive commandment for him, that he should do so without being erect. And therefore, if the hachamim give him the license to do so while he is erect, they are violating that mitzvah ase, and they are liable for parhe'anim davar shel siburu. Perush omro gamken hayavin aleha, that Bedin should be liable when they gave a hora'ah, and they allowed the pulling out, even though it is prohibited. Likewise, 
the man himself is also Hayav Korban because Bemezid it would be Karet, the Shogeg, it would be Hatat. Kol Zeh Bemitzvat Aseh Shebanida, Ve'eno Hayav Ba'aseh Shebamikdash, Kimo Shenebaim Behorayot. All of this is talking about the mitzvah aseh related to midah, but as we saw in the previous mishnah, is not connected to mitzvah aseh shabbat mikdash. So these two mishnayot go off sort of on the topic of par he'elim davar shosibur. Um, I guess a musar point is that bedin have to be very cautious about how they give out horaot and to make sure that all of their instructions are proper. Um, and uh, hopefully we're zochet to that, and that a person has to always make sure that he is uh, doing the right thing as far as. Uh, what Bedin are telling him to do, assuming that they're telling him the right thing.